Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. How's everybody doing? I hope you guys have been having an amazing week. Uh, last week, we did training on why you should be using Chat GPT to grow your business. And I hear some of you have been using it and having great success. Anybody else been using it and want to share uh, how that's working for you? Anybody else using it? Rochelle? I, oh, sorry. Hi. Um, hey. I've been using it for some time prior, but now I've been using it for my business more so. And I think it keeps me, my posts more accurate. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's more, people can understand it more. Than Good. Really trying to figure out stuff. So it's much easier. Absolutely. But I use chat DBT. I use a different program, but it's mm -hmm. like it. Same thing. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of different names for it, but it's still the same thing. It's basically mm -hmm. using AI uh, to help you, uh, you know, do research and to create your posts. Anybody else? Kimberly? I haven't used it yet. However, I've been noticing other people and it seems like they're using it. So I've just been more aware of it. <laughs> good, good. Right. It was always there, but it just wasn't in the front of your brain. So it's like it was invisible to you, but the people have been using it. And it um, it just makes what people are trying to say, say it more professional and more eloquently, right? And using those trigger words that are also going to help your social media algorithm. So that is another thing too. Anybody else been using it? All right, so uh, some of you need to go back and watch Tuesday's video because if you were here Tuesday and watched it, you'd be using it. <laughs> uh, I want to send a shout out. Miss Debbie Jones just hit Silver Builder. Woo -woo! Debbie, how does it feel to be a Silver Builder? And what's got you on fire? I, I just noticed a change in you. So talk about it. Well, I am feeling very, very uh, motivated. Um, and what's helped me do that probably in the last month is I um, partnered with a new um, partner about three months ago. And I've known her all my life. Um, well, all my child's life. She was a friend of my, my daughter's. And she had used me a few times for travel. And I had peaked her probably three or four years ago. And she reached out and wanted to partner with me. So I got her all signed up and she's been in almost not even three months yet. And she's already a bronze builder. So she has motivated me because I don't want her to pass me up. <laughs> so I am, I am very excited. I'm looking forward to hitting gold. So Good. I'll excellent. Stop here. excellent, excellent. Listen, the goal is never let your downline outrun you. <laughs> Right. Don't let your, you were there before them. So, so they shouldn't outrun you. Now you can't always control that, but that should always be the goal is to never let your downline outrun you. And you never know who, and here's the thing, this young lady is in Debbie's matrix, right? Because Debbie enrolled her, but guess what? She fell into somebody else's matrix. And so if that person is building, they got to be making those $4 bills off of everybody she's bringing in the business. So you see why it's so important for you to work your business and unlock this matrix. Everybody should be fighting to get to gold builder if you're not gold yet. Everybody. Because you never know who is going to fall in your matrix. So let's jump into today's topic. Today's topic, tips to handle objection and rejection. Now, I want to hear from y'all in the chat. How many of you really, truly struggle with the rejection? With people telling you, no, I'm not interested. How many of you really, really struggle with that? And, and you're taking it personally to the point where it's almost debilitating and you're not working your business because you just don't want to hear the words no, I'm not interested. Shamika says she used to. Shamika, what what 
what did that do to you when you were feeling that way? And why were you taking it personal? Uh, when I was feeling that way, um, it was like, man, what am I doing wrong? Um, you kind of feel like giving up, like, man, one more person tell me, no, I'm just, I'm just not going to do it no more. This is not for me. <laughs> you really second guessed it. Uh, so that's how I was feeling, um, uh, when people would tell me no. And I guess it was just me feeling like, you know, this is a great opportunity. Why don't you understand it? Why wouldn't you, why would you say no? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's how I was feeling, um, in the beginning. Anybody else struggle with rejection? Michelle, you said you used to, but you've gotten much better. What helped you get better? Hi, Director Burke. Um, I I feel like I'm I'm now mentally, I understand the the potential and the opportunity. And so now I'm looking at it more of as this is an opportunity that anyone can take advantage of. But if they choose not to take advantage of the opportunity for whatever the reason is. I understand now that it's just either not their time or it's just not for them. And I'm okay with that, but I still know that this opportunity is amazing mm -hmm. and I'm just going to keep pushing. So it's the mindset. I love that. I love that. Kimberly, you said not anymore. I use it as fuel. Talk about that. Yes. Um, this was my first time in a uh, network marketing, so I didn't realize the game in terms of just the attrition rate and all that so once I heard about that I use it as fuel it's like okay I know the no is here but yes it's coming and so it, it's just motivation to keep me moving to get those yeses because they're there this is a phenomenal opportunity and so even the ones who don't get it they'll wish they did so I just love it I love it. I love it. I love it. So handling objections and rejections is an integral part of network marketing. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to handle these situations. All right. Number one, empathize and listen. Empathize and listen. Show that you understand their concerns and respect their opinions. Listen actively to their objections and respond in a calm, respectful manner. I was recently doing a three-way call with someone and the person, the prospect was saying that, um, number one, she mentioned that during the conversation that her and her husband were looking to plan a trip to, I can't remember where it was, Aruba or somewhere, Dubai, I, I don't remember. Uh, she told me that she was a true entrepreneur at heart. Her son does real estate and no, either real, no mortgage lending, something, I don't know, something in the real estate and that she, by the end of the year, um, as a timing thing, by the end of the year, she wanted to have her real estate license. Um, I think, yeah, I think her son does mortgage lending or something. So, you know, they're looking to create this whole family dynamic of, okay, this one gets the property, this one's able to help the person secure the mortgage, right? This whole family enterprise and stuff like that. And so what she was saying at the end was, um, you know, that this is something she definitely wants to do, um, but she really needs to line up and have this real, you know, jump into this real estate thing um, and have it completed by the end of the year. And so what I asked her was, um, you know, has she spoken to a realtor and does she realize <laughs> the economy that we're in right now? Like right now is not the time to get into real estate, right? And she said, oh no, I understand that with the interest rates and stuff. She's like, I'm just getting myself ready because we know it's not gonna stay like this. And I said, okay. And so what I shared with her was, um, I said, well, here's what I suggest you do. This is just my recommendation. You want to get into position now because this person only has $1 million seat left. And I took the time to explain the million dollar seat. And I told her if she misses this opportunity, she's going to be kicking herself that she should at least get into position now. Between now and the end of the year, she could just focus on the travel side while she's pursuing 
her real estate license. And then after the first of the year, whenever she's ready, let me know. And then I can start her training on the planet marketing side. Once I broke down the compensation plan and explained the million dollar seats, she perked up. She's like, okay, wait a minute. Now I understand the numbers. And she signed up. So this is someone who was going to wait because she wasn't ready to actively build the business. But I explained to her, she wants to get into position and we can hold off on the building side, the planet marketing training, and she could just focus on the travel side and go ahead and book this trip to Dubai through her own thing. And I told her exactly what she needed to do as far as getting into the IntelliTravel training so that she could start. And she signed up. But it was because I was listening to her objection. I was empathizing, right? I understood exactly where she was coming from and why she said it. But then I was able to calmly, from a business standpoint, share with her the reasons why she needed to get started immediately instead of waiting. All right. Any questions on empathizing and listening? All right. Let's move on to number two. Stay positive. Stay positive. Rejections are a part of the process. Stay positive and don't take it personally. Remember that a no might not mean never, but not right now. And remember, your role as a planet marketing rep is to just expose as many people as you can as fast as you can. That's it. No more, no less. Your role is not to sign people up because you cannot control that, right? We don't know what's going on in people's bank accounts or their households. And so if your job was just to sign people up, sign people up, I'm like, oh my gosh, this would be a miserable business to have, right? If that was the way we looked at it. But if you look at it as, I just need to share the information with as many people as I can, as fast as I can that are willing to listen, that are looking for this type of information, doesn't that make everything so much easier, right? I did a, a business broadcast last night and one of our business partners, she had, I think four guests, four or five guests on and all of them said they were number three. They're, they're not interested right now. I commended her because she did her job. She, she just exposed the business to five more people who will now patronize her business send her referrals and guess what they're gonna keep seeing her win in her business and at some point they're gonna come back around and say hey i'm ready now so she did her job it doesn't matter that none of them were one or two they were all threes but i'm so proud of her because she just exposed five more people to the business who are now going to be watching her a lot closely aren't they because now they know what she's doing right super super important Number three, ask questions, ask questions. Try to understand the root of their objection. Is it about the price, the product, the business model? Asking questions can help you understand their concerns and address them more effectively. Again, same example I just gave you. You know, the lady said, you know, not right now. The, the root of it was she didn't want to be overwhelmed. She said not right now, not because she didn't like the business, not because she thought $200 was too much money, not because she was scared of the marketing side of the business. The root of it was I have this real estate thing I'm about to jump into, right? She's going to have to be studying, going to the classes, taking the test. She doesn't want to be overwhelmed with learning this other new business. So that was the root, not wanting to feel overwhelmed because she had something else that she needed to get into first that was time sensitive. So because I understood the root, I was able to address the root cause. No problem. Get in now. You were going to book this trip to Dubai anyway, book it through your business when you're ready to jump into the marketing side and go through that training, you let me know. And that's it, right? So ask questions so that you can understand what is the root of their objection.
So Kimberly said, I'm running into more people who either have a family member who tried it, is doing it, or know someone else who is doing it. Yeah, the word is getting out there. When we 95,000 strong, right? That's what's going to happen. It's no longer like, okay, we, we're the new kids on the block and nobody ever heard of Planet Marketing. Oh no, the word is getting out there. And social media is helping it get out there. So if you're not actively sharing this business, you are behind the ball. If you got some distractions going on that's taking your time away from growing this business at this moment, you need to rethink some things because it's a window of time. And I need y'all to really understand this. There is a window of time for you to become flat out wealthy in this opportunity. And so whatever else you got going on in the world that's taking time away from this business, you need to make some adjustments or else you are going to be kicking yourself five years from now. And you're going to say, oh my gosh, I wish I would have just stop doing that and just focused on this because I missed it. I don't want that to be you. So reevaluate what you have going on so that you can put your focus on this window of time. You got until we hit a hundred thousand to really secure this legacy. And so if you're doing something that's taking your time away from hitting these promotion levels, I guarantee you, you are going to regret it. You will regret it. I guarantee you, I have not a single doubt, you will regret it. Anybody regret not buying Facebook stock? Amazon stock when it first came out? That, that's, that's this moment in time with Planet Marketing. You're getting in at the ground level. You're in, you made a decision to get started, but have you made a decision to win and, and, and go for it? Or are you still playing around with it? I promise you, you will regret it. If you are not putting all of your focus on building this business as fast as you can, this will be the biggest regret of your life. So I hope you all get that and you're just going for it. Whatever else you got going on, it'll still be there. But this will not. This opportunity to get it before we go into momentum, it's a window of time. Don't miss it. Number four, provide information. Provide information. Often objections stem from a lack of understanding or misinformation. Provide accurate and clear information to counter their objections. Make sure to back your points with credible sources. That is, I think, a big issue. Some of you are not plugged in. This is your business. You're the CEO of your business but you're not plugged in to the trainings, you're not taking any notes, you're not plugged into the team meetings. And so you are so lost when someone comes up with an objection or asks you a question, you don't know because you're not plugged into your own business. And so nobody's gonna wanna partner with you because you seem clueless. Would you? Ask yourself this question. Would you partner with you based on what you know? It's funny. I know some, sometimes when me and my husband are joking around about something, right? And, I'm, and he thinks he's right. I think I'm right. And he, he'll say, I could write a book on what you don't know. <laughs> right? That's like a, like, a, like a joke. But can I write a book on what you don't know? because you're not plugged in? It's a problem and I see it all the time. You cannot be a part-time CEO. 
you could do this business full time, part time, but not sometime and think you're running a business. And some of you are asking questions. And here's the thing. Nope, there's no stupid questions. Not at all. However, some of you are asking questions that you should already know if you were plugged in. And that's a problem. If you were just plugged in, you would know the answer because they're, they're basic foundational questions. How to send something from your app. You should know that. I did a whole training video on how to work the mobile app. Spent 30 something out, uh, minutes of my time going over every single feature in the mobile app. So is it fair to then ask me a question about the mobile app? I, I'm supposed to stop what I'm doing to ask you a question on something I already spent 30 minutes going over. We don't have time for that. You have to utilize the tool. And there's so many tools and resources to help you in your business. But how are you going to lead a team and you're not taking the time to get the information and learn how to utilize the tools? Right? So educate yourself. Become the expert in your business. Your goal should be to master everything in your business so that nothing becomes an obstacle from you hitting your goals. And the same thing, again, your, your, your objections and rejections that are objections that you're getting from your prospect, they just need more information. They don't understand. They don't understand the comp. This young lady did not understand the million dollar seats because that wasn't part of the three-way call. But once I broke down the million dollar seats, she's like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not missing out on a million. And there's only one left? Okay, I need to get started immediately. All I had to do was give her more information so that she could make an informed decision based on the facts. Does that make sense? Okay, good, good. Number five, share success stories. Share success stories. If someone objects to the idea that network marketing can be a viable business, share success stories of people who have done well in the industry. This can help alleviate their doubts. How simple is that? Sharing the success stories. And you know what? It's so true because when I'm at the um, Orlando weekly meeting, immediately after, I usually go up to the guests, I shake their hand, thank them for coming, ask them who invited them. And I ask them, what did you like best about what you heard? And so many of them say they love the testimonies. And when I think about when I was in their position, what did I like best hearing about? The testimonies. And this is why we say stories sell. Facts tell. Stories sell. Facts tell. So you have to master. Anybody ever have me do a three-way call for them? I want your honest opinion. Because you know, I do the same format for my three-way call. Who are you and why did you decide to get started? What is it that, how much money you want to make? What are you looking for? And then I go into my story. How many of you that I have done three-way calls for, and I want your honest opinion. How many of you feel that it's my story that is what makes them say yes? Kimberly, talk about it. You have a powerful story and your story lines up with what most people want to do. You know, we want to retire early. We want to be able to 
provide a home for our family. We want to be able to uh, make so much money that, <laughs> you know, we can afford that. So your story is yours, but it's so real and applies to so many different people. Yes, thank you. Anybody else? Anybody that I've done a three-way call, you feel that my story is what sold your prospect on getting started or definitely helped push them to be like, yeah, I want to do this? I would say yes, um, because you, even though it's your story and I could, you know, I could kind of say it with you, the way you tell your story is in relation to what, you know, the prospect is kind of, it kind of relates to them if that makes uh, sense. So they can be like, oh, okay, well, she, I was that too. So it, your story is definitely relatable. So I agree with um, Kim. Right. And so here's the thing. And all of you can leverage my story. It doesn't have to be your story, but you can leverage my story or a Natalie Graham story or a Gregory Scott story or a, a Desiree Benson story right? A Crystal Brown story, a director Jody Wynn story, right? A director Riley story, right? All of these stories, but some of you are not showing up. You're not at your weekly meetings. You're not on the team Zooms. You're not on the basic trainings. You're not on the IMV. And so guess what? You're not hearing the story, so you can't leverage them because you've never heard them before. You're crippling your own business because you're not plugging in. Story, sell, facts, tell. Go watch the movie, Madam C.J. Walker. Watch that movie. She is the first person to create black hair care products. And there is a scene in the movie where she's in the town square set up like a, it's like a little flea market going on there. And she's holding up her products and she's reading off the ingredients and people are just ignoring her walking by because nobody cares about the ingredients. Means nothing to them. But then she stopped and she started sharing her story of why she created the product in the first place. What the condition of her hair was how she was out in the marketplace looking for something that would help her, couldn't find anything. And so she had to create her own and people stopped to hear her story. That's what you have to do. But if you're not plugged in, you don't have a story to share. And your own story is going to develop over time. My story today is a lot different than the story I was sharing seven years ago before I made any money. But I was still sharing my story of why I got started. And I kept telling people, this business is going to allow me to retire within the next two years. I hadn't made any money yet. But I knew that this was gonna be the business opportunity for me to do that. And so it was my story. Even though I wasn't a director yet, it was my story of why I got started in this business that made people want to join the business because it was relatable. I was sharing Mr. Gregory Scott's story. I loved telling people that my sponsor was a DEA agent. I love sharing that. Oh yeah, he's a federal agent. He makes six figures on his job, but he's making six figures in this business. Why? His story led, gave credibility, right, to this business. Because if he was a, as a federal agent, do you think he could be involved in a pyramid scheme or a scam? So that's why I never got that question when I share his story. Because nobody would believe a federal agent could be involved in a pyramid scheme. Shamika? I was going to say, this is good. But um, to kind of talk about what we were talking about at first with the rejections and, you know, how it make us feel, um, plugging in and hearing those stories actually 
made me um, get over those rejections and objections as well. It made me stay because I was able to relate to some of those stories. Like on the team meeting, when you hear this lady got seven kids and she do this and she do that, and she was able to go one style. You like, okay, I, I got two kids and I'm over here about to pull my hair out. <laughs> you can relate to it. So um, not only that, you know, you get educated, but you definitely get a chance to build those relationships and have access to hearing those stories. So, you you know, you thought you was going through something when really you ain't going through nothing at all. So right. it helps you appreciate um, appreciate those things. So I, I love this conversation. Absolutely. Leverage J.P. Watkins' story. Everybody on here should know J.P. Watkins' story. You should know it. She shares it all the time, but it's powerful. Laid off and a car repossession. Got to move back in with your mama. Everybody should know that story so that they can leverage it. But again, some of y'all are just too busy to get on the IMV. Some of y'all are just too busy to get into basic training. Hold tight. Hold on. Some of y'all are too busy to get on the team Zoom. And so because you're too busy doing whatever it is that you're doing, you're not able to take advantage um, and hear those stories. So that's a problem, right? So you got to fix that. Shh. Sorry. All right. Number six know your product know your product you should know your product or service inside hold on sorry skylar doesn't like delivery people <laughs> okay so know your product you should know your product or service inside out. This will allow you to confidently address any objections related to the product or service you are offering. What's our product? Can somebody tell me what our product is? Travel. Travel. What specifically? Our product is in teletravel. Right, so as a planet marketing rep, we don't sell travel. That's not our product. So what's our product? Travel agencies. Thank you. Our product is IntelliTravel. The IntelliTravel business is our product. Our product is not travel. Our product, what we actually sell, is the IntelliTravel business. Y'all got to understand that. And so you have to know your product. Can someone on here, I want someone on here to explain the best travel price guarantee. Who can explain the best travel price guarantee? Kimberly? If your customer or client uh, comes to you and books a trip, but they find one at a better price, if it's the same everything itinerary, apples to apples, and you... Um, so they find it and they say, hey, I found it for cheaper. And then in teller travel will, if they can't meet or beat it, they will give 110% of that um, trip to the customer for their next booking with Intel travel. Close. Can anybody else explain the best travel price guarantee? That was good, Kim, but you're, 
You're missing a, a very important element. It, um, I I agree with Kim. Um, but they they say that they would match it, but they would give them um it back in Intellibux. Okay. There's still the an element Intellibux. that's there's still an mm -hmm. element that's a very important element that's missing. Shamika? She's missing. They will give you 110% of the difference. How's your niche? In I Intellibux. Oh, and <laughs> isn't it within seven days? Is it something, is it within seven days? Close, but that's still not what I'm looking for. Anybody so did I say no? Nope. Anybody else? Can anybody else explain the best travel price guarantee? All right. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. So thank you all for those of you who gave your definition of it. But again, it goes back to knowing your product. You have to know those three guarantees because that is a big selling point of our product. But you have to know it, all the details of it. So here's the best travel price guarantee. It is when your client books travel through your IntelliTravel booking engine. That's the piece y'all were missing. It's specifically when they book through your IntelliTravel booking engine. Because how can IntelliTravel give somebody a credit who you book through Delta Vacations? That doesn't even make sense, does it? That's between you and Delta Vacations. So it's super important that you you make sure you say when someone books through your IntelliTravel booking engine, because that's the only way that guarantee is applicable. That's the only thing it's applicable to is when they book it through your IntelliTravel booking engine. The other that's part, the major piece, <laughs> the major piece, right? The major piece. And also it's within specific time frames. So the time frame from them booking a rental car is going to be different than the time frame from them booking a flight or a cruise or a hotel. It's different time frames for different items. But they have to actually book it and have a confirmation before you can even apply it. So it can't be that they looked on your booking engine and then they went on Expedia and they looked on Expedia and they're like, look, they're different. No, they have to book it with you and have a confirmation. And then IntelliTravel will either match it, beat it, or give them 110% of the difference in a credit in Telebucks towards their next vacation. So I highly encourage you to go into your IntelliTravel back office and you need to read the guarantees and understand each and every one of them. Because you have to know your product. If you don't know your product, and there's some, some, some of you, let me go to the other side. Some of you, I love it. You're like, I'm focusing on the marketing side. And so you, you, you do nothing with the travel side. You might not even have your booking engine set up yet. You ain't personalize it, then put a picture up, nothing. That's not good either. And as much as I love that you're focusing on the marketing side, you got to know your product. Because there's some prospect out of there who's going to be gun ho excited about the IntelliTravel product, and you can't even speak intelligently about it because you ain't even set up your, your, your website. You ain't complete the online academy yet. You ain't passed the final exam. You haven't participated in five of the training webinars. You haven't attended a dream maker yet. You haven't done your CLIA courses. All of those things you're able to do right now. And then you're wondering why you haven't made any money in your business. It's because you don't know your product.
So you're afraid to talk to people about it because you don't know it. That's something that you can control. That is 100% in your control. My newest business partner, is she on here? Amira, she's not on here. Amira been in the business not even 30 days. Got her Dream Maker certificate. Completed her CLIA course. Registered for convention. Been to the weekly meetings with me. Has had her business launch. She hasn't signed anybody. Oh no, she signed one person already. She's doing her trainings. She's so excited to talk about this business because of all of the things she's already completed in IntelliTravel. She hasn't made a dollar in IntelliTravel yet. Not one single dollar. But she's educated in her product. And she's dedicating full time to mastering every aspect of this business. So she's not afraid to talk about it because she's already a certified dream maker. Some of you haven't done that yet. You, you have to be knowledgeable in the product that you're selling or else no one's going to take you seriously. And that's all 100% in your control. All right, number seven, practice. Practice. The more objections you handle, the better you'll get at it. Practice your responses so you're prepared for common objections. Start with your family. Because if you mess it up, they're still going to be your family. You know, one of the things that my husband did, he had index cards and he would write out an objection and then provide the, the response to it. And guess what? After a certain amount of time, he didn't need them anymore. Because he just knew. And here's the thing. There's maybe five to eight objections for this business. The same five to eight. It's, it's, it's always the same thing. So you'll hear it over and over and over again. It's not going to take you any time to master the responses to the objections because they're the same ones. All right. Number eight, be honest. Be honest. If you don't know the answer to an objection, don't fake it. It's better to say that you don't know, but you'll find out rather than provide inaccurate information. This is the reason why you should be scheduling the three-way call with an expert. Some of you are doing this to your prospects. You talking too much. You're training on how to overcome objections comes from the three-way call with your expert. We provide on-the-job training. It's called the three-way call. And the more three-way calls you schedule, the faster you'll be able to overcome the objections yourself. So when you become gold builder and now you're doing three-way calls for your downline, you'll already know how to overcome every single objection because it was your senior business partner that did the three-way call for you that you learned it. See how that works? You just got to go follow the system. If you don't follow the system, then you're, you're missing the elements to help your business move forward. But some of you, you haven't got, all right, I'm going to ask a question. I want y'all to be honest. Be honest. In the chat, I want you to put, when was the last time you had a three-way call set up with your senior business partner? Be honest with yourself. Everybody's scared. Look, ain't nobody typed nothing yet. Oh my goodness. All right, I see Saturday, last week, this month, March, last week, two to three weeks ago, eight months, probably a month ago, July, two months. Thank you for being honest, June.
Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you are embarrassed about when you had your last three-way call? Michelle, tell me why. Sorry about that. Um, I guess it's because most of the time when I do have people come on the presentation or come on the the um like watch the vi the video and i ask them can i set up a time with them to to get their questions answered they are either i'll do it later or i don't have time or when i and i'll follow up with you in two days and then two days comes and then they they don't respond to me or they'll say i'll let you know and i'm not sure what to say to i i'll let you know because i feel like that's like their way out okay of okay. dealing with it okay who can tell me what Michelle is doing wrong? It's as clear as day. She sent the video out. She needs to schedule it. She needs to schedule it. Put hold it on her calendar. Hold on, divorce. Debbie, I, I want to hear you. It sounds like she's, uh, she's ending the video before she sets the appointment for the call. Ding, 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 ding. How many times have I told y'all BAM fam? Who could tell me what BAM fam is? Book a meeting from a meeting. Okay, so with BAM fam, what is Michelle doing wrong? She's inviting people to look at the opportunity, whether it's through a video or a webinar, but she's not scheduling the follow-up at the same time. The follow-up is the three-way call. So Michelle, when you invite someone to a webinar and they say, yes, I'm, you know, okay, I can get on the webinar tonight, right at that moment, you're supposed to be saying, okay, I wanna definitely follow up with you to see if you have any questions, what's a good time for you? Okay, I I have to get better at doing that because I do tell them that I wanna, I wanna talk with them afterwards, but I don't necessarily set it. So I have I to get better at that. Telling them that you want to talk to them after it is not scheduling the appointment. Got it. Don't let other people dictate how you do your business. You know that's the system. You know you're the, the whole the whole thing that we do is schedule appointments. That's it. That's all you're supposed to do. Schedule the appointment. And I've said this repeatedly in multiple ways, multiple times. But if y'all keep doing what you've been doing, you're gonna keep having the same problems. No one should have to be chasing someone down after they've looked at the information, after you showed the plan, it's PS3. Peak interest, show the plan, three-way call. And I've said all the time, nobody gets the big picture video without you scheduling the appointment first. They don't get that. If you play spades, the big picture video is the big joker. You ain't gonna lead with the big joker without getting something. Schedule the appointment first, then they get the big picture video. If you're inviting them to a webinar, say, great, I'm so glad you to, you can attend. I wanna make sure I get your questions answered. When are you available after the presentation so that I can get your questions answered? You wanna do it tonight or sometime tomorrow? That's the three-way call. And if you do that, now you don't have to chase people down because you look unprofessional and not unprofessional. Let me clarify. You look desperate when you're chasing people down to find out what they thought of the opportunity or if they're interested. You look very desperate and I don't want y'all looking like that. Michelle, don't you feel desperate when you're having to chase them down? Be honest. Um, I do. Thank you for being honest. It makes you weak. You're welcome. It makes you weak. So bam, fam, book a meeting from a meeting. Jean said, this is what I've been missing as well. <laughs> she said, the light has come on. Good, Jean. Jean, see what happens when you show up? When you show up for your success, you will get everything you need to be successful in this business everything you need. Okay. 
Number nine. Ooh, ooh. Know when to walk away. Know when to walk away. If a potential customer or prospect continues to object after you've addressed their concerns, it may be best to politely end the conversation. Not everyone will be a good fit for your product or opportunity, and that's okay. I gotta read that one again. I must read that one again for the people in the back who didn't get it. Number nine, know when to walk away. If a potential customer or prospect continues to object after you've addressed their concerns, it may be best to politely end the conversation. Not everyone will be a good fit for your product or opportunity, and that's okay. Y'all, if y'all don't get anything else, please get that one. I promise you, you don't want everybody in your business, Some, especially your family members. Some of them are going to be a waste of your time and your leader's time. If it's not for them, it's not for them. It's okay. If every single Amazon driver joined Planet Marketing, how are we going to get our packages? Who is Skylar going to bark at? It's okay. It's not for them. Thank God it's not for them. Thank God they told you up front instead of you wasting several hours training them and then just for them to quit. I love when people tell me it's not for them. I do. I do. I'm so thankful because you did not waste my time. Thankful. Be grateful because I've had some people that I've spent a lot of time with and did not get a return on my investment. A lot of time, hours, and did not get a return of investment of my time. And then there's the ones who keep starting, stopping, starting, stopping, starting, stopping. Every time they start again, they want more of your time because they don't know what the heck they're doing because they ain't been plugged in. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, I wish you would just quit. Just quit. You, you, you ain't never going to do what you need to do. Just quit. Stop wasting my time. So when you do have the people who quit, be thankful. They're saying, here's who I am. So believe them. You just got to change your perception of when these things, you look at it as a negative, like you lost something when people quit or tell you that they're not interested. I look at it as a gift of my time back and my energy back. That's the way you got to look at it. Right? Not everybody's for your business. And then you're going to have those people that do come into your business and they're such a blessing. Y'all connect on levels even outside of the business. I love, love my business partner, La Tiffania. Took me forever to learn how to say her name. But we have a great time when we get together. We, we, we do things together outside of this business. So I'm so thankful for the business relationship, but, but the friendship, the sisterhood. And I learn a lot from her. So when you rather have somebody who you can also learn from than to have somebody who's just draining all your darn, darn energy, those energy zappers, it's okay. It's not for everybody. And number 10, follow up, follow up. Just because someone initially says no, doesn't mean they'll never be interested. Follow up politely after some time to see if their situation or feelings have changed. Remember, every rejection is an opportunity to learn and improve. With each interaction, you'll become more capable and resilient. You'll learn how to better communicate 
the business. But it, it takes time. You have to you have to keep doing it over and over and over again. And then it just becomes second nature. It becomes who you are. All right. So I want to hear from three people. It's one o'clock. I know I have a one o'clock, don't I? Oh, Kim, we have a one-on-one. -on -one. Give me one second. All right. Your biggest takeaway from today's session, La Tiffania. Your biggest takeaway from today's training. Um, just in a synopsis, just continue to do what I'm doing. Um, I've just learned to enjoy whether it's the rejection, whether it's someone that, you know, is overwhelmed and overexcited. And even whether they come to the business or not, it's just the fact that I was able to just stay out of my shell and introduce it. Perfect. And so that's where I am. I was like, it's all good. If, if you want to, hey, come aboard. If you don't, it's good too. And But I try to get those individuals and book their travel. So that's the way I look at it. I love it. I love it. Turn those no's into travel clients. And that's the default. The default is if they don't partner with you, they become your travel client. Isn't that good too? I, I got a, I got an email um, the other day, actually on the 15th from IntelliTravel, from Overrides, that I wasn't even expecting. I was so excited. I said, ooh. Thank you. I got my second one, so I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's so unexpected because especially if you're focusing on the marketing side, you don't be paying attention to the travel commissions. But when they come in, you're like, oh my gosh, I just love my business. Zara, your biggest takeaway from today? Well, my bi biggest takeaway is basically um, to get to know your business inside and out. Because when you asked about the... Um, the guarantee, I was like, I'm not there. So I need to um, do a lot more studying and learning my business. Thank that you. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing that. That's good. Anybody else share your takeaway? Tangela? Hi. Hi. Um, share my takeaway on um, basically knowing your product. And one thing is time management because I work a full-time job, so I have to really make time to do my business. Yes, so that's you gotta what have doing. business hours. Business hours, yes. Angela, 98% of the people in this business also work a full-time job. So yes. we love you, but you're not special when it comes to that. <laughs> that's almost okay. everybody. Comment below me if you work a full-time job in addition to doing this business. Who here is also working a full-time job while doing this business? You see, Tangela, you see all those me's? Okay, Latoria Mayberry made $250,000 a year still working a full-time job, okay? My sponsor, Gregory Scott, quarter of a million, working a full-time federal agent job. Most people work a full-time job working this business. And, and the way you have to look at it, Tangela, is this, from nine to five, you are helping someone else build their dreams. But from five to nine, you should be focused on building your own. Your job don't own you 24 seven. Okay. All right. That concludes coffee break for today. I hope you all got some good nuggets that you can take and apply it. The key is to apply it. If you don't apply it, it was worthless. Okay, apply what you have learned and I'll be back on Tuesday. Who's ready for convention? Anybody start packing yet? I gotta start thinking about what I'm gonna wear because it's gonna take me at least four days to pack for convention. But I will see y'all. Have a great day. Love y'all. Everybody jump off. Kimberly, you stay on. <laughs>